Here we're going to look at a quick but slightly mind-bending result involving an infinite stack of spheres. So let's look at our stack of spheres. We've got one at the bottom with radius one unit, one right above it which has radius one over the square root of two units, and then the one stacked on top of that has radius one over the square root of three units, and then one over the square root of four units, and then one over the square root of five units, so on and so forth. Like I said, this is an infinite stack of spheres. And now we're gonna take three measurements on this stack of spheres. The height, the surface area, and the volume. And I think this is pretty interesting because this is like a one-dimensional measurement. So in other words, we're measuring from this base down here to the very, very, very top of this infinite stack, if there is a top. And then this is a two-dimensional measurement. Notice that'll be the area of the surface of the spheres all added up. And then this is a three-dimensional measurement, this volume. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so to measure this height, well, we're clearly gonna measure the height of each of these spheres. But notice the height of each of these spheres is just given by the diameter. So the diameter of this is two, since the radius is one. So we've got two for the first sphere. Then for the second sphere, we have two over the square root of two. And then for the third sphere, we have two over the square root of three, and then two over the square root of four, and then two over the square root of five, and then so on and so forth, and that extends infinitely. But we could gather that all together in summation notation. So notice that'll be equal to two. I can most definitely factor a two out of this whole thing. And then I have the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of one over the square root of n. So now we need to, if possible, find a closed form for this sum. But if anyone's taken a calculus class, like a calculus two class, or maybe you know anything about the harmonic series, this is larger than the harmonic series, and thus it diverges. And it also diverges infinitely. So this sum is in fact infinity. So that means how tall is this stack of spheres? It's infinitely tall, so it never ends. Okay, now let's look at the surface area. So maybe before we get started here, I'd like to recall that the surface area of a sphere, so I'll just write that as SA, is equal to four times pi times the radius squared. We won't derive that here. So that means we need to calculate this object for all of these radii. So one, root two, root three, root four, so on and so forth. So that means we're gonna start with four pi times one squared, so that's just four pi. And then next we'll have four pi times one over the square root of two squared, but that's just gonna give us a half. So that's nice, the square is gonna kill the square root. And then we have four pi times the square root of three squared, but that's just gonna give us a third. Again, those cancel. And then you can see where we're going here. We have four pi times a fourth, and this extends infinitely. Now we can do something similar to what we did before, and that is factor a four pi out and then rewrite this with summation notation. So that's gonna be equal to four pi, and then we have the sum, n goes from one up to infinity of one over n. And that's exactly the harmonic series which we discussed earlier. So notice the n equals one term will be one over one, n equals two term is one over half, n equals three term is one over third, and then so on and so forth. But just like this guy up here, this one also diverges infinitely. So this is also equal to infinity, which we won't prove here. That's a fairly well-known result that you'd learn in like a calculus class, just like this one up here. So how do we interpret this? Well, that means that if we were to paint this stack of spheres, we would need an infinite amount of paint because the amount of paint that we need depends on the surface area. Okay, now let's finally calculate the volume. Well, obviously something kind of interesting is gonna happen with this volume, because if we got infinity for all of these, then it wouldn't be super interesting, there'd be no point to do this. So let's look at the volume, let's recall that the volume of a sphere is given by 
4 thirds times pi times r cubed. Now let's see what we get using our radii here. So that's going to give us 4 thirds times pi times 1 cubed for this one. And then next we'll have 4 thirds times pi times 1 over the square root of 2 cubed, but that's 1 over 2 to the 3 halves using some exponent rules. And then the next one will be 4 thirds times pi times 1 over 3 to the 3 halves. And then that continues on and on and on. We can again factor some stuff out. In this case, the 4 pi over 3. And then rewrite this with summation notation. So this is going to be 4 pi over 3. And then we have the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of 1 over n to the 3 halves. And now by something called the p-test, this thing actually converges. And since it converges, this has a value of less than infinity. You might say, can we find a nice value for this sum? Well, in fact, there's no real nice way to write this down without using something called the Riemann zeta function. Maybe the best way to do this would be to take the sum and rewrite it as zeta 3 halves. That being said, we can do an approximation. And I did this approximation by taking the first 10,000 terms from this sum in a computer. And I got that this was approximately equal to 10.8589. So we got a finite value for the volume. So that means if we had clay, we could create all of these spheres and stack them on top of each other if in fact, we could infinitely divide them. So that's maybe how we would interpret this as having a finite value for the volume. So let's conclude here. The height of the stack is infinite. The surface area of the stack is also infinite, but the volume of the stack is finite. And that's a good place to stop.